Hello lovelies, welcome back to my channel. Today is a Tuesday, so we normally do very, very deep dives into the environmental, social and ethical issues with the world. Today I wanted to have something that was a bit lighter because you know my love of Disney is very real despite my struggles with it as I talk about up here. I put way too much lip gloss on. I just wanted to have something light, fluffy, happy, distracting because sometimes you need it, especially when you're talking about horrible things that are happening all the time. My theory is, I believe that Disney princesses would be vegetarian or vegan, especially if they were alive today. I think that if any of them were alive today, 100%. So please hear me out in this totally non-scientific take. If you can suspend your disbelief enough to listen to a Jamaican crab that is also an amazing composer, you can listen to this and just not critique it too much. <laughs> but if you do want to correct me, always feel free. I want to point out a disclaimer, I will not be talking about the characters that were based on real as people. A couple of videos right here, which you can reference um, for that sort of information. We're keeping it light, we're keeping it fluffy, everything is just going to be a nice little happy speculative conspiracy theory sort of time. I'm just going to be putting on my makeup which is all cruelty free, vegan, not on my parent cab as a test on animals. So without any further ado, let's just jump straight into it. Sources in the description, makeup products used on my face in the description and let's go. We're going to go through character by character in kind of the most chronological order that I can kind of muster except for the fact that the Disney timeline is convoluted, doesn't make sense, references are from everywhere, it's pulled from all different countries. So let's look at Merida, the 10th century in Scotland. Okay, <laughs> She 100% would kill something to eat it. So you can count this as like my whole argument being shot down by an arrow. This is not a ginger attack, this is just going by her actions and from what we've seen and we tend to judge people by their actions. Except this is where my conspiracy theory brain just like kicks into overdrive because what about when her mother turns into a bear? Like she saw that the bear had emotions. She could see that it was her mother in there. Hmm, maybe then she'll be able to apply to the fact that, wait, I could see the emotions on this bear's face. So, oh my gosh, all animals actually have, can feel pain and have feelings. Life changing moment. We need to talk about Princess Jasmine. It says it's set in medieval times in the Middle East. The medieval times lasted from the 5th century to the 15th century. And you can ask Jeannie, 10,000 years can not only give you a crick in the neck, but people can change a lot in that time. But there was a source which I'll link down below, which has placed it at 800. And also, I'm only on about the animated version because, okay, Big Joel has done an amazing video on this because politically, absolutely nothing changes with the reimagined, remade one, which is done in live action, whatever. Princess Jasmine in the original had more character development than this one, and also the political stance is made even more obvious in this one that nothing's actually going to change for the people. Just watch Big Joel's video, it's linked down below, it's fantastic. I personally think that Princess Jasmine was one of the most um, sheltered Disney princesses that we've had. Hear me out. Hear me out, okay. So she was actually a princess at the start. She lived in the castle. She never left the walls. Everything was handed to her on literally a platter. So she wouldn't have actually known like where the food was coming from. She would just eat what the servants gave her, you know, as you freaking would because she wouldn't know how to cook. Um, but what I'm saying is like staunch feminist, absolutely 100%. She had that like nailed down. However, I don't think that she'd have known where her food was coming from. So maybe she wouldn't have been even a vegetarian then. Maybe not, maybe not. Um, however, so it's like we know that she loves animals because she loves Raja. Even though Raja would have totally eaten the boo if he had half a chance. I did a little bit of a Google search because it was referenced that Aladdin was actually based on places near the Jordan River. They actually ate a mostly vegetarian diet around then. And, and millennials, listen, almond milk was like all the rage. So almond milk isn't actually a new thing. It's, it's ancient, literally. I'm just saying that things would have probably been a lot more vegetarian than what we actually realize because meat was expensive, which is why I'm saying like being a princess, she would have had easy, plentiful access to everything. It doesn't even know what money is. She doesn't have to know what money is. Everything gets handed to her on a silver platter. I think that if she was alive today, 100% would have been vegetarian or vegan. And probably actually way more outspoken than a lot of other people. Nah, she'd have been vegan. Nah, yep. Yeah. I'm calling it now, you can fight me, fight me all you want. Now, still in the medieval times, because it lasts for such a long time, 
talking about Aurora. Her friends are fairies and woodland creatures. I mean, come on, you think that that owl that she was dancing with, she would start chopping up for dinner? Oh, also fun fact, there was actually a vegan poet in medieval times as well, so have fun with that link. So think about it, she was living as Briar Rose as a peasant girl, um, and she gets lovingly referred to by the prince. <laughs> Don't you love that? Not the fact that he was actually falling in love with her or anything, or that she was beautiful, or that she was nice, or that he had a great conversation. No, she was a peasant girl. I actually used to like Prince Philip until I said that. Given the cost of meat and how hard it was to actually get, and it was normally reserved for special occasions or the nobility, I don't think that Flora, Fauna, and Meriwether would have been out like killing stuff in the forest um, and I definitely do not think that they would have been encouraging a sweet delicate flower of a princess to be like strangling animals. I just I don't see it adding all of like the fact that she was going to be royalty and like couldn't get her precious hands dirty and stuff like I honestly think that it would have been pretty much a vegetarian diet like I said that was just what the poor people ate and also given the fact that they had very little knowledge of nutrition like they thought that we were made of like four elements I'm like I just, I don't think that they would have really been counting their macros back then. I think it would have more been of like a case of survival. So yeah, I would probably be saying that Aurora would be a vegetarian. We're on to the 1500s, we're getting out of medieval times and we're going over to Germany. Our very first Disney princess to ever grace our screens in 1937. Oh my god, that's going to be 100 years ago so soon. So it was actually really, really challenging trying to find out what they ate in Germany back then. Um, I'll link some resources for you down below so you can uh, have a little look into it as well. But yeah, weird. Snow White was how old again as well? Yeah, that's right. She was 14. Um, and the original book... <laughs> well, let's try not to dwell on that too much, shall we? I'm not going to talk about it. I'm going to let John Solo tell you about that. So she knew how to make pies, like gooseberry pies by the way. So critters were helping her like clean the house, like cook stuff, literally like doing the cute little dashes on top of the pies like she was making stuff. So I don't really think that she'd be eating the help and I don't think that she would know how to kill something in order to eat the help. So for me personally I think that she would have been vegetarian again. Like it's one thing to take the eggs from your like feathered friends. But also, how did she get milk? Where did she get, like, the butter from to make this pastry? And, and where did she... Okay, where in a forest do you find flour? Not that kind of flour, but, you know, flour to bake with. Like, where do you find that? I, I should suspend my own disbelief here. I'm just putting it out there. Like, where? Where is this amazing grocery store that is, like, the cute little place inside of a forest, which is where I would love to live? Like, please. So regardless of the fact that we do not know where this magical store where she got all of her lovely ingredients from, out of anyone who could tell anybody what to do, I mean look at the effect of her on Grumpy, like Snow White would definitely be able to tell them, um, actually you're not going to be bringing carcasses inside this house because did you see how long me and my fellow forest friends had spent cleaning up this place? Do you know how long it takes to get like blood stains out of stuff? You basically, with wood, would have to strip the whole thing. So... Yeah, I'm pretty sure that she'll be able to tell them, um, no, we're going to be foraging from now on. Now, again, it was quite common to actually eat vegetarian back then. Meat's hard to come by. Even if you have, like, seven hungry, angry men trying to hunt stuff down, fairly hard to come by. But they could use Snow White as a trap, as, like, a lure, because when Disney princesses are staying, it just brings every forest critter out and they all have a great party. And also, given her upbringing of, like, being literally, like, a slave to the stepmother who hated her and tried to kill her. I don't actually think that she would have been eating like meat and all of the best things anyway because I think that she would have been eating in a similar way to how Cinderella was fed. Or fed, shall we say. Shall we say. I know how much people love this princess and so this is gonna... Um, I'm ready for the pitchforks. Hear me out, we're gonna talk about Belle. So Belle, 1700s in France. What happened in the 1700s? Because this is actually more specifically placed in the 1770s. When was that French Revolution again? Of course, this is in rural France. So I think it was like based around Naples. I've seen like that online. So yeah, we know that the guillotines and the pitchforks and everything is coming. But on the lead up to the revolution, incredibly high taxes, 
terrible wealth distribution, everyone's just getting like, serfs are just suffering, everyone is suffering, things are just kind of bleak and then you've got Marie Antoinette just like in Versailles like living her Sofia Capella like fantasy effectively. I don't think it would have actually been by choice that she didn't actually eat animals. I think it would have actually been out of necessity. Like she had a single father so you would actually eat meat only on special occasions. Now we know that she had pigs and chickens. I do believe it's pigs if I'm remembering that scene properly. Probably absolutely vegetarian. You wouldn't have been eating meat every darn day Again, it's out of necessity. It would have definitely been more of like a special occasion kind of jam. So she is one of our only Disney princesses without a feathered furry friend. You know, she's one of the only ones that doesn't have that. Now we know that she's a kind person. We know that she's all misunderstood. She loves books, all this other stuff. She does have a whole bunch of like enchanted furniture friends, including a dog that got made into a footstool. I mean, I guess it's easier to clean up after. Like what, you have to pick up a tassel because even the horse is like a horse it's not like a friend horse we, we have flounder raja and a teacup justice for Belle. she deserves a friend too it's not oh, maybe they're counting beasts as her pet <laughs> i feel kind of sorry for her because she should just eat the gray stuff while she can because um those pitchforks are coming and it's not gonna be fun for them i'm i'm very sorry there is there's a hilarious link that I'll leave in the description box for you. It's not the only time a mob is going to get assembled to go take down some people. This time it's not based on fear, this time it's kind of based on justice. Let's move on to Rapunzel, which I'm actually quite glad that they changed the title of it to be Tangled because can you imagine poor little four-year-olds trying to say Rapunzel when they can't even say yellow? So her favourite soup is hazelnut soup. And, okay, I did a little bit of digging for each of these characters. You could actually get hazelnuts in Germany. I even looked into it. Apparently, this is set in, like, the 1780s. However, the style is more close to, like, the 1830s to 1840s, which is actually closer to Anna and Elsa's time. But, you know, that, that's, that explains the crossover. It absolutely was. Okay, no confirmed fact. It must be the 1830s to 1840s because... We know that it was after her haircut that she went to um, the coronation. So, we, we just cracked a code. Oh, okay, so for hazelnut soup, there's a bunch of different recipes that you can use, but it's like potatoes, parsnips, like that sort of stuff, like the easy, hardy vegetables that you can grow, basically. Okay, so what job was a single older woman, even, even though she had like the youth serum of like magical hair, like, what was she actually doing as a job? Because as a single woman, you have got a terrible reputation because you're a single woman. And if anyone found out, I don't think that anyone would have thought that she had a daughter though. Or oh, daughter. So what job would she do? Because it's like, I don't see her getting her hands dirty and wanting to like farm stuff. I also don't see her wanting to get her hands all that dirty and like chop up a carcass and like carry it upstairs. I think that they would have also been vegetarian out of necessity also because like what wages was a woman going to be making back then? Nothing. She was even wearing clothes that are like way older. Maybe it's a way to hold on to her youth but also possibly because clothing was really really expensive and if she would have got her fine wares when she had a male suitor in the past who bought her this fancy fabric because that is satin. That is like fancy fabric that she's got on her dress. Same as for Rapunzel, if you can actually see it. It actually has a shine to it and she's got lace trim and stuff. So I'm like, that would have been really expensive. But you can also tell that Rapunzel's growing out of it. So like, because the length of it is not long enough. Out of everyone, I can absolutely see Mother Gothel skinning something. Like, alive. I, I just, I know it sounds like an awful thing to say. But we actually saw the way that she immediately knew how to handle Flynn and take down a grown strong man. Yeah, I think she would have been able to do it, but I also don't think that they would have wanted to like cut water up there to clean blood out because that was a tall tower. So we know that Rapunzel did baking because it's like a princess thing. So I actually think that vegetarian makes the most sense because it was relatively easy to get hold of eggs, at least to my understanding. I'm not a historian anyway. We're moving on to Anna and Elsa in 1820s in Norway. They screw up my whole story. Back then it was actually very hard to survive and I was looking at like the recipes that they would make. Most things involved meat but also salt was super expensive, like flavour was not that much of a thing. They had to eat meat immediately. So you think about it, 
they don't actually have an animal friend either. They have a snowman, they've got Olaf, which is from Elsa's imagination and given sentience and consciousness. We don't need to think about the physics of that. But anyway, they actually don't have an animal friend and even more sheltered than Jasmine, like way more sheltered. I mean, if you want to talk about sheltered, just think of Anna. Lovely girl, wonderful character, little bit naive, little green. I understand why they clothed her in green quite a bit. Mm, subtle, subtle messaging. But you know who does have an animal best friend? Kristoff. Now, they did eat reindeer and uh, still do, but I, I, I don't really think that Anna or Kristoff would have been wanting to eat reindeer. And then as, okay, conspiracy time again, as um, our lovely Anna actually learnt more and more and more about the world, I think that she would have been like, oh, that's where meat comes from. That's where this stuff is from. We can't eat that. How, how, how could you? How could you do that? And, you know, have a classic Anna freak out. Okay, so because we've actually got Elsa, who has the ability to freeze and unfreeze stuff, basically control the weather, potentially change, like, the climate crisis that is happening right now would be amazing if they were actually real. Would Anna be asking Elsa to make changes to this stuff so then they could have like no famine in the way that Norway actually had to suffer through? I think that that would have absolutely happened and I also think that Anna would have been the one to make Elsa turn vegan as well because of her incessant optimism that is just always in your face. You can just see it. Okay, so then, of course, we move on to Cinderella, like, probably the kindest soul out of all of the Disney princesses. But she also doesn't take any BS from anyone, which is one thing which I really appreciate about Cinderella. Um, now that you're actually done, like, saving me from my evil stepmother and stepsisters, um, would it be okay if I just kind of, like, ate your friends? Like, I know that you actually, like, sewed my mother's dress and, like, you made my dream come true of, like, just having a night off because that was actually her dream. Her dream wasn't to marry a rich guy. It was to just have a night off and go to a ball and have a party. And that was the dream that she got. And then she just got more because, you know, it's a Cinderella story. It's a tale as old as time. I would honestly, rationally be putting her into the vegetarian camp anyway because we know that her family that she was left with hated her absolutely hated her so she would have been eating table scraps and leftovers and possibly like the eggs that weren't wanted to be eaten so say for example if they were overcooked or something like that is honestly what i see happening um i know that this was referenced in the remake i actually do kind of like that remake because again it was meat very very expensive and hard to come by and they squandered all of their money on dresses and like makeup and fine things to like look richer that was what they spent their money on. So I really honestly do not see her eating meat, like, ever. We know that they had animals. When she goes to the castle, um, she loves Bruno. The mice come with her. She has her animal friends. She would have fully carried on the vegetarian lifestyle. Out of all of the Disney princesses, the one that would understand suffering the most and want to actually be the kindest would be our Cinderella. Like, fully, 100%. And also the Age of Enlightenment had been happening and so from England, like I think that this is where it like originates, at least from what I was reading, like they actually had been turning to having vegetarian food and not eating meat anymore. So I do actually think that this would have been something that could have easily spread, especially to a city like what she would be living in as well. So not only out of necessity for her, but then also just like, hey, um, we can hear the screams, like pretty sure the animals have feelings even though still to this day some people don't realize that cool 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 yeah carbon neutral beef though <laughs> we are now on to my favorite disney movie which is the little mermaid so based in the 1890s apparently so Atlantis, we don't know exactly where it's found. Same as like, this is the most contentious movie of location. The story in the book is set around Denmark. You can swim to different places. The ocean is quite big. It covers two thirds of the world, if you didn't know. However, people are saying that it's actually based in Italy for the movie and potentially Italy for the book as well because of like some references in there. However, when you actually look at the architecture, the style, and they buy baguettes, it's France. It's the south coast of France. I'm sticking with it. I'm saying it's in the south of France. So if you're best friends with a fish and a crab, do you really think they were going to be any a fish and a crab? I don't necessarily think so, sweetie. So Eric's Kingdom. It's on the side of the ocean. It's like, you can kind of tell 
where their mainstays in terms of employment would be. However, I mean, it's like, do you really think that the best voice across the whole world would be wanting to actually still encourage this? Like, once she got her voice back, Ariel was very, very vocal of a person. So, you can almost imagine that, like, she would have been trying to make some definite changes here. And also, I... <laughs> Okay, other theory. I think that Scuttle would have probably been telling her about, like, what happens to the animals on land. I think that that would have been happening. And, um, I, Heike, I would love to hear his version of animal agriculture. I think that would actually just be fabulous, especially if we go by, like, the way that he describes a fork as a dingle hopper and, like, what we actually use it for. I'm like, okay. Here for this tall tale, let me get like five wines and then I'm so here for it. So I think that yes, maybe Eric's kingdom will be going through some shifts, shall we say. And yes, I know that Cracked probably covered this like years ago when it was really, really cool to hate on Disney stuff. And it's like, oh, I'm so edgy because I don't like a fairy tale that's made for kids. I think that she'd be more into seaweed than shellfish. And if you didn't know, seaweed is actually like a booming market. Like people are finding incredible things to do with seaweed. And so I'm just saying that there's an easy shift out there for Eric's entire kingdom to stay employed and stay like rolling in money. It's absolutely possible. It's fine, we'll blot it, it'll be fine. I want to talk about Tiana in New Orleans. So this is obviously in the 1920s. I kind of actually knew that Tiana would be another person to sort of make my whole story just like unravel like a terrible tapestry because this is obviously not something to be taken very seriously anyway. Just just a side note, we have to start distinguishing that it's the 1920s as well because we're literally living in the 20s now. So let that sink in. This is about 100 years ago. And can I also just say that I think that this movie did Tiana as a character a terrible disservice because Almost There is one of the best Disney songs to happen musically, artistically, everything. I love it so much. And she got made fun of for the fact that she worked to make her dreams happen. I'm sorry, what? This movie was just too convoluted. She got made into a frog for over half of it. It's like, come on. I Justice for Tiana. We're not given the impression that she's much of an animal lover, but that's only because she doesn't like frogs. That's the only thing that's actually been established. So we don't really know if she likes animals, doesn't like animals, wants to eat them or not. This sent me down a little rabbit hole. I'll leave some resources down below, but if you're part of the black community, then I would love to hear your thoughts on this as well. Because it's like, beignets can be vegetarian, gumbo can also be made vegetarian, but traditionally gumbo, which is what she made with her father at the start of the movie, if you're not understanding my reference here, like that typically uses meat. This is the whole other side tangent because we do not know what generation Tiana is from from when the slaves were brought over to America. So we don't know exactly where in Africa she's from because it could be from a number of places, sadly. And sadly, that's still an issue with being able to trace the whereabouts of family members. A lot of recipes are actually shared orally as opposed to like written down so that was how like recipes got passed down at least from what i've seen um a lot of things are actually vegetarian dishes and it kind of got stylized in a different way when the soul food movement was happening and also soul food is actually a term that was coined in the 1960s as well um but it's that's what we think of when we think about the food that tiana would have been making back in new orleans entirely like not my space to talk about which is why i'm linking way more resources for this one down below as well because also there's the other fact that black people actually represent the fastest growing vegan movement in america so you think of people obviously like tampa the brown janae claiborne of sweet potato soul fame bryant terry at trace mcquota like there are so many stories to share given her propensity to care about others i think that she would have actually taken to vegetarianism like very strongly especially as she was searching for her roots because she's a very family oriented person. So this is what I'm thinking for Tiana anyway. And I think that if it was today, she 100% be, would be like the Tabitha Brown of our times. Obviously all of this is speculating on fictional characters um, because I made sure to just keep it to the fictional characters as opposed to butchered stories. Disney. Again, I'm no historian. This was just like a fun little video that I wanted to create to just like boost my mood, have a nice little bit of fluff. The last lot of videos I've been doing have been pretty dark, so it's been just good for my own little mental health to do this. I'm still working on the PFA video. I'm, I'm waiting for people to get back to me and my impatience is growing. So 
I'll be working harder on that. But anyway, if you made it all the way to the end of this video, please leave the crown emoji because you're all princesses, you're all queens in my eyes, and you're all lovely as well, which is why I call you lovely. But yeah, I think that every single Disney princess, if they were alive today, they fully would be vegetarian or vegan uh, because I don't really think it's a princessy thing to be slitting throats of animals that you love and are friends with. But that's my own personal takeaway from this. I know, just speculation. Everything is speculation. I hope that you enjoyed this. I hope that you had a fun time. If you did, give it a like, comment. I'll see you on the following Tuesday. There may be a review video. Thank you, lovelies, so much for watching. I'll see you again next time. Bye. I'm so getting used to this new hair. It's so much short. I had like four and a half inches taken off. It's so short. You can actually see the ends in the frame. Wow. Elsa? Are you sure you want to eat that? Here, have some rice and beans. Ah, I really want it frozen now. I'm sorry for your ears for that. I can't sing.